let you know that I just finished 41 years in the teaching profession. In class now, there's a quiz when I'm done. There's three really good reasons to be a teacher. June, July, and August. <laughs> there's my segue to paid vacation. And I want to give you some reasons why teachers earn that paid vacation few examples from my life, but I want to ask you something. Do you have any idea why teachers have the summers off? There we go. See, I'm using my teaching skills. Somebody raise their, raise their hand. Yes, ma'am. Sc yeah, school is closed. <laughs> All right, here's a little history for you. The school year was developed back in the late 1800s when we were an agricultural society. How many of you have sent your kids out to farm the fields recently? <laughs> no, you haven't, huh? You know, it's like one of my favorite sayings is, if we always do what we always did, we'll always get what we always got. Something needs to change. Actually, in California, they're doing year-round school, and they're doing it very successfully from what I hear. Imagine going to school for maybe nine or ten weeks, you have a couple weeks off, you don't have that summer problem where your kids lose the retention when they are home for 10, 12 weeks. All right, so here's some of my examples. You can all probably go back to high school. Who was the one person that you loved to hate? That was Mr. Gartside in my school, because Mr. Gartside was the disciplinarian. And you hated to hear your name over the loudspeaker in the morning when you're sitting in homeroom. All right, the following people, please report to Mr. Gartside's office. John Smith, Monte Carlo, April Showers, Rick Stevenson, and then the whole homeroom's there looking at me. By the way, those two names, Monte Carlo and April Showers, they were kids I went to high school with. My parents are really fun people. Well, we love Mr. Gartside so much that uh, we built a statue in effigy of him one morning and put it in the lobby on a toilet, and then we all scattered off to homeroom. So he was earning his paid vacation. Then we had a science teacher whose name was Mr. Reba. Who remembers fizzies? Who's old enough to remember fizzies? Fizzies were little tablets that you could drop in water and they would fizz and turn it like a soda. One day he starts science class by announcing, all right, who put the fizzies in the fish tank? And this one's a little gross, but we had Mr. Wirtz for math. Mr. Wirtz wore sport coats every day. And he'd always walk up and down the halls, or the aisles, excuse me. And some of the guys thought it was really cool. They'd put a little piece of spit on their finger, and then they'd flick it onto the back of his coat as he would walk by. So by the end of the day, he had a lot of loogies on the back of his sport coat. I told you that one was gross. I taught for many years at Upper Darby High School. One year I was teaching a group of freshmen, and they're doing a warm-up. I taught physical education, and they're running around the gym as a warm-up while I'm taking roll. And there were six baskets in the gym, and one of the students jumped up, and he's hanging on the basket. And I waved at him, and I called him over, and I said, do me a favor, don't jump up and hang on the basket. So I go back to take and roll, and a couple minutes later I look, and he's hanging on another basket. And I call him over, and I said, I would have told you not to hang on the basket. And he looks at me and he says, oh, I thought you meant that basket. I was earning my paid vacation. I had a professor at Westchester University, and he had a little habit. He would write on the blackboard. That's a piece of black slate with <laughs> chalk that you write on. And then when he wanted to erase, he'd use his hand. The only problem was he had a little problem that he would touch himself, but his adjustment would always be down here. So by the end of class, he had a white bark in his groin. And on our classes on Thursday, somebody got the bright idea we would start a pool, and whoever was the closest to the time that he would get his first white mark on his groin didn't have to buy beer at Joe's that night. And here's my last one. I coached both men's and women's gymnastics for two years. And when the kids were warming up, they warmed up on the floor exercise mat, and it was kind of like a warm up, and it was also a social time. And this one day I noticed it, and they're just laughing 
their heads off. I mean, they were like rolling on the mat laughing. So I walk over and I ask them what they're laughing about and they tell me this story about one of the guys who happened to be the English department head, his name was Mr. Brope, and he was a cafeteria supervisor. And he had a little nick thing going on where he'd spot a coin on the floor. And he'd just kind of casually saunter over to the coin and he'd stand on it. And he'd look around and when he didn't think anybody was watching, he'd, bend and he'd pick up the coin and he'd get it into his pocket. So somehow the kids picked up on this. So they started scattering coins around and they did this for a couple weeks. And then one particular day, he's looking over and there's a quarter on the floor and he goes, you know, thinking to himself, wow, that's a quarter, that's not a penny or a nickel or a dime. And he saunters over and he steps on it and he eyes the cafeteria, makes sure nobody's looking at him and he bends down. Oh shit, it's glued to the floor. <laughs> Mr. Brobst earned his paid vacation. Thanks very much.